Italy went into this game having beaten France twice in their last three RBS Six Nations meetings, on both occasions in Rome. But the Italians had yet to record a championship victory in Paris. Indeed, the visitors were on a run of 16 consecutive away defeats in the Six Nations, so a win at the Stade de France was always going to be a tough one to achieve. Coach Jacques Brunel made five changes from the side that started against Wales. Yanone, Garcia, Di Marchi, Forno and Minto all came into the side. France, playing their 700th test match, went into the game full of confidence after an opening day win over England. Having won 59 of 64 games against Italy, that confidence was probably justified. Philippe Saint-André made three changes, handing a debut on the wing to Hugo Bonneval, son of the 18 times capped Eric. Also included in the starting 15 were hooker Dmitry Szerzewski and Lok Johan Maestri. France were camped in Italian territory for the first 10 minutes, but with no reward. Jean-Marc Dussain had two penalty opportunities, but on both occasions his kicks were off the mark. The first in the fourth minute, definitely not one for his career highlights DVD. And then two minutes later, from a more difficult position, again his kick went wide of the posts. Italy then managed to establish some possession just inside the French half. And when Pascal Pape was ruled offside, Gonzalo Garcia stepped up to take the long-range kick. Normally very good from distance, this time the Treviso centre was short with his effort. On 23 minutes, Garcia had a chance with another equally long-range kick, but it went wide. The first points eventually arrived when Italy were penalised in the 26th minute in front of the posts. And Dusan tapped the penalty over from close range to make it 3-0 with 26 minutes gone. Anyone who expected France to have things all their own way in this game were being proven wrong and within a couple of minutes Tommy Allen clipped one over the bar to make it 3-all. Allen missed with another kick before France edged back in front. Louis Picamol made the break and South African referee Jaco Paper harshly penalised the Italians for dragging down the mall. Dusan's kick went over the bar, off the post, and that put the home side back in front on 33 minutes, six points to three in what was proving to be a dour affair. Flair rugby was in short supply, but at least for French supporters there was the consolation of another three points two minutes before the break. Last weekend, the Italians conceded 14 penalties against Wales, the highest number of all teams competing, and it was proving to be their undoing again in Paris. Dusan fired over the bar, and France were 9-3 ahead. That's how it stayed until the break. The French in front at half-time, but not a 40 minutes of rugby that will live long in the memory. If the first half was disappointing, the second started with a bang, and it was France who immediately took the game to the Italians. Picamol took the ball off the back of a mall to break free, and despite the best efforts of Leonardo Sarto to stop him, Picamol got the touchdown. He'd scored a try for France in their defeat in Rome last season as well. The ref did go to the TMO for confirmation that the try was good, and when he got the OK from the man in the van, French supporters could start to celebrate. Dusan landed the conversion and France had a 16-3 lead in the early stages of the second half. Within two minutes, the Stade de France was in party mode and the man to get the fans out of their seats was centre Wesley Fofana, whose break down the right wing was exhilarating with his power and pace taking him clear of the Italians for a try that killed off any hope the away side might have had of a comeback. The man from Clermont, nicknamed the Leopard for his searing pace, gave a great example of that speed in scoring this try. Brilliant from Fofana, and when Dusan converted, it was 23 points to three, and just a question of how much the French would win by. On 51 minutes, the home side stretched their lead further. Fofana again involved with the interception, before sending Juan Huge away, the man who scored two tries against England last time was held up, but he managed to find Bonneval, who scampered over the line for a try on his debut for Les Bleus. A tremendous moment for the young winger, and a further blow to Italian morale with the concession of a third try in ten minutes. Dussain confidently converted, 
and France were 30 points to three up. In fairness to Italy, they tried to come up with a response and in the 65th minute, Josh Furno would have been in for a try at the corner flag, but for a fine last-ditch tackle by Uge, who managed to knock the big second row into touch. Two minutes later, substitute scrum half Tobias Botez was directing matters close to the French line. And when he darted for the whitewash, it looked like Italy might have their first try of the afternoon. But after a lengthy spell, looking at the replays from all angles, the TMO judged that the French managed to hold Botez out. Five, yes. Things got a bit scrappy towards the end. First of all, French substitute Sebastian Bahamahina was shown a yellow card for kicking the ball away just moments after coming onto the field of play. A blow penalty against them, and he kicks the ball away. Then tensions rose further when things got tetchy in the scrum. Italian sub Michele Rizzo and French sub Rava Slimana ended up in serious trouble when they exchanged headbutts. The TMO was called to confirm the referee's suspicion that the two front rowers had indeed headbutted each other. The pictures weren't pretty and the ref was left with no option but to send them both off. You started it, headbutt, red for you. You reacted with headbutt, red for you. Please. France were now down to 13, to Italy's 14. And the Italians made use of the extra man as the game drew towards a close. In the 77th minute, Botez picked out Janone on the wing, and the man from Zebre got over for the try. The 23-year-old's first try in the Six Nations for his country. A proud moment for him. Luciano Orquera kicked a fine conversion to bring the score back to 30 points to 10. But it was merely a consolation for the visitors who were well and truly beaten after the French whirlwind start to the second half. That's two wins out of two for France who take on Wales in Cardiff next time. They win the Giuseppe Garibaldi trophy for winning this tie. Italy hosts Scotland next time out with both sides looking for their first points of the campaign. Final score in Paris, France 30, Italy 10.